Me. Yeah, this is the robotic lab, Romella, and this is where the magic happens. With 20 robotic creations under his belt, Dennis Hong is one of the world's leading roboticists. Is there a choice you make when making robots to make them more robotic looking versus more human looking? If it requires the human form, then we build a robot in a human shape. Walking with two legs is very, very difficult. If it doesn't need two legs, there's no reason to put two legs on it. Why do we need two legs? It needs to move around. In your home, there's stairs. When you open the door, the door handle a certain height. Why? Because it's designed for us humans to use. Right. So unless the robot is a human shape and size, it won't be able to navigate the environment. Who's that guy hanging out over there? Yeah, this is a robot called Darwin. It stands for Dynamic Anthropomorphic Robot with Intelligence. Hello, everyone. My name is Darwin. I'm Open Architecture, a humanoid platform for research, education, and outreach activities. But Darwin isn't just a cute research robot. He's also a world-class soccer champion. That's right, Darwin and Dennis Hong are gold medal winners of RoboCup, the robotic soccer tournament. And it turns out a soccer field is the perfect place to hone the skills a robot needs to operate autonomously. They can see it actually sees things. <laughs> there you go. The actual soccer match is much, much complex as you can imagine. He needs to know where he is in the soccer field and where the other players are. Other players are, and then he needs to think ahead and predict. Right. He has to understand the game of soccer itself. <laughs> Kick, <laughs> goal! They're the same skills the robots will need out in the real world in order to recognize and understand their surroundings, interpret interactions accurately, create goals, and act accordingly. Things that are second nature for you and me, but monumental challenges for robots. These robots work in a really, really very uh, controlled Control. environment. In the lab, all the robots do perfect software. You take it out of the lab and put it in a different situation, it gets confused. So trying to make a robot that can really deal with unstructured environments outdoors is very, very challenging. If you want to use robots for real life applications, disaster relief, it needs to walk over rubble, it needs okay. to climb unstructured stairs and those kind of things, then we still have a long way to go. What's next? We also have a hexapod robot called Harry. See, hexapod robots are cool, but th this is when they start to get creepy because it's like spider robots coming yeah. to like take over. <laughs> what would be the applications for a robot like that? So this uh, could be used for a very unstructured rough terrain where wheels cannot go and sometimes two legs doesn't cut it. Yeah. So we have six legs. Uh, it can climb up different surfaces and also it's always stable. What will be the first robots that are going to happen? Medical robots, uh, military applications, disaster relief, where human lives are on stake, that's where you're going to see robots uh, being used.